Welcome, everyone. I'm glad you can join me in this presentation. My name is Jovana, and I will be a virtual tutor today through Interns for Good. Today, we will be covering Russian 101, an overview of Russian culture and its importance, as well as basic greetings and more. Before we begin, I will go over the skills you acquire in this presentation. You will gain a new understanding of the importance and uniqueness of Russian language, history, and culture, as well as an introduction to the Russian alphabet, basic vocabulary, and important skills. Finally, I will go over tips on how to further study Russian. Anyone is welcome to this lesson, although it is aimed at 10 to 14 year olds. Now to get started, what does Russian even sound like, you may be wondering. Perhaps you've heard it before, or maybe you have no clue. This is a clip from the American movie Anastasia, in which a Russian singer dubs over an American song. Anastasia is based on the legend of the last Russian Tsar's missing daughter. The Tsar and his family were like Russian royalty before the 1920s. To play this clip, you should pause my video, go to the slideshow, and watch this on your own time, and then we can come back and discuss it. Now that you've listened to Russian, try to think or write down what you like and dislike about it, and what you think will be hardest to learn. To get the basics covered, we will first discuss what and where Russia is. Russia is the biggest country in the world, spreading across Europe and Northern Asia, also known as Eurasia. It has 144.5 million people which most tend to cluster near the cities, but there's still plenty living in the widespread country land. Russia was once the Soviet Union, which included other Soviet states besides Russia itself. Russia was also once a monarchy, meaning it was ruled by, by a royal family as we saw in the previous video with Anastasia. Where do people speak Russian, you might wonder? Obviously in Russia, but Russian is unique in that it is used in many other countries and by many types of people. Examples include the majority of Eastern Europe, who use or know Russian besides their native languages, in the Caucasus and Balkans, even some places in Western Europe, such as the United Kingdom and Germany, as well as countries in Asia like Israel, China, Mongolia, and Vietnam. Finally, in the Americas, there are plenty of small Russian population clusters, again near cities like Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, and Toronto, as well as Alaska, which used to belong to Russia and was sold to the USA as its state. There's even Russian speakers in Cuba. If you're wondering where you could speak Russian, wonder no more. Russian is everywhere. In the world, Russian has 260 million speakers, including learners like you, and is the eighth largest language just by native speakers. The, the United Nations, an international peace organization, has named it one of its six official languages. Finally, even if you can't travel to areas where Russian is spoken the most, Russian is everywhere on the internet. It's the second most widespread language after English there. Now we will begin covering some basics on Russian modern and traditional culture, as well as diverse landscapes, since it is the most widespread country, too. In these pictures of Russian landscapes, you can see there are plenty of forests, rivers, mountains, and plains to be found in Russia, especially as you head east farther away from the big cities. Russia is sometimes only known for its colder areas, like icebergs, frozen lakes, and old trees in Siberia that you can see in some of these pictures. However, there is much more to Russia than the cold, although it is definitely chillier than in South America, for example. Now here are some Russian traditional buildings. Russians are usually, usually, usually Eastern Orthodox, and their churches are heavily decorated and colorful, as seen by some of these pictures. Besides churches, there are sprawling palaces that royalty used to live in and that government organizations use today. At the bottom right, you can also see a traditional wooden building on the old streets of Russia where the ordinary people lived and worked. This really big image shows Moscow, Russia's capital today, as the Russians have not only maintained their old culture, but added super modern technology and buildings in their cities. In this slide, we can see some of Russia's traditional clothing, which is very colorful and patterned like their buildings. The women wore stylish dresses and sometimes headpieces too, called kokoshniks, which come from the Russian word kokosh, or mother chicken. People living in the more countryside areas of Russia wore warm, thick clothing and furs. Men of everywhere tended to wear flat, long blouses with minimal design. On the bottom middle picture is Russian clothing during the Soviet era, where style was more toned down and practical for city living. You can also see the old babas, or grandmothers, wearing head coverings and gathering together to sell their sweets in the cold. 
In this large picture, this shows how many Russians dress today on a regular basis, tending to prefer dark, stylish designs. In this final slide, we can see the interior designing of Russian culture. The top three show the cozy, organized, and patterned livings of the middle and low income, especially in the countrysides. The bottom pictures show the extravagant, detailed, and very much gold-covered livings of the Russian upper class in the olden days. This large picture shows an average living room of an average income family in Russia today. In the cities, people tend to live in apartments and small homes. In the countrysides, many continue to live in their family's cottage and farms for centuries afterward. To finally get started on learning actual Russian, I have added these great lesson videos where this woman will take you through different categories of Russian letters to make it easier to memorize. Categories such as Russian letters that look like English letters, that have different sounds, that don't look like English letters and have strange sounds, or any sort of combination. The first video is about 5 minutes, the second is about 10. On the bottom there is a link to these letters and the pronunciations to look back at. Right now you should pause my video and go to the slideshow to watch these two videos on your own and look at the website before we go on. And now we're back. Hopefully you watched the videos and found them helpful as we continue in today's lesson. Now that you know how the Russian alphabet works, you may be scared by it a little. How are you supposed to learn a whole new alphabet? Well, you take it slowly, one by one. It's not that different from the English alphabet, just that the symbols are unfamiliar. To get used to reading Russian and to make it easier to learn at the beginning, use the transliterated forms of Russian words. This means the Russian word is spelled out how it is pronounced in English. For example, this strange looking word here, is pronounced привет, which means hi in English. This will make it easier to learn words and replace it later with the symbols once you understand them. For writing, you, sh you should also use transliterated words. Besides that, keep practicing recognition of the Russian letters that we cover in the videos. Three times a day, write down the sounds of the alphabet in their proper order, like B, E, and H is B, which is this symbol right here. Make sure to use both the symbols, the English transliterated forms, and actually say the sounds yourselves. And also make sure to check yourself so you don't put yourself in a trap of repeating the same mistake. What you miss a lot, do this exercise a lot more for. If you know some letters like the back of your hand, refresh your memory a little, but focus on the ones you don't know. Now for Russian phrase practice. You'll be, get, you'll be doing a game. On the left, you can see this picture of a website I attached a link to. On this website, you will first listen to each of the Russian translator pronunciations and repeat the, what the woman says. For example, I would click on the headphone icon next to the Russian translation of good morning. Again, this is transliterated. Once I click on and listen to her, I will repeat it three times by myself. Dobre utro, dobre utro, dobre utro. Do this for all of the words from the top to the bottom. Then play the games below. You can pick which order you want, but the one I recommend is written on the slide for you. I would do playing game by audio, playing the game with transliterations, learning the phrases with Cyrillic, and then playing the game with Cyrillic. Stop here and go to the slideshow to click this link and play the game. The next slide has the exact same thing as this one, but just more phrases, though they tend to be a bit more advanced. Try to repeat the same steps as the last one. Welcome back. You may have covered basic phrases in the games, but there's much more to Russian than those phrases. To learn more words, once you're done with the presentation, go to the overall website and explore all the different categories doing the same things you did in the last two games. The link is right here. You should do this after we finish this video. Moving on now. Here's a video teaching you basic Russian words and context. You will need to watch this video before you go to the next slide because we have an activity related to it. Pause my video, and again go to the slideshow to watch this by yourself now. Make sure to repeat with the characters when they say the words. Be an active learner here. Welcome back again. Here is the activity. 
Hopefully you watched the video before you did this, because if not, you'll need to. It's time to get off your computer screen and apply your new words to real life. Find some sticky notes or make them using paper squares and tape. With your parent or teacher's permission, start labeling items in your room or house. For example, if I see a table, I will write the Russian letters and transliterated word for table, stol. Every time I see or use the table, I will repeat the Russian name and try to spell it in my head too, until I don't have to look at the card anymore. Pause the video here and complete this activity. Congratulations, you made it this far. Sadly, for today's introductory video, we have finished the lesson. But that doesn't mean you're finished with Russian. There's plenty more to learn. If you want to keep learning Russian once the video is done, you can check out the appendix page where I added the names of popular books, games, apps, YouTubers, and more to help you continue learning Russian. Don't try to use every single resource. Pick the ones that work best for you, and pick a good mix of them. Use them one by one. Don't try to read a book and play a game and watch a YouTuber at the same time because that won't help you learn. You'll get stressed and no one likes learning with stress. Just pick one and stick to it. Slowly climb the levels of Russian language. But sadly, if you don't want to learn Russian anymore or aren't sure if you like it, make sure to check out other Slavic languages too. There are so, so, so many of them. And they're all very similar to Russian and each other. Sometimes they can even understand each other almost perfectly. But there's still important differences like the writing systems and the pronunciations. Some examples include Polish, Bosnian, Slovakian, Ukrainian, Serbian, Bulgarian, Czech, Slovenian, Macedonian, so many more options. Now some final tips before we end today's video. First, find some other native speakers and learners to practice with, whether in real life or online with your parents' permission. Other people are the best resource. Second, don't be embarrassed when you make silly mistakes. You did just start learning. And even native Russian speakers struggle with Russian. Just learn from your mistake and let it go. Third, it's okay to not constantly practice. In fact, I don't recommend that you do. Learn for fun and you'll learn better. Don't force yourself to do three hours a day if 30 minutes a week suits you most. Set your own pace. And finally, stay organized and stay motivated. If you take longer to learn Russian than you expected, don't lose hope. You can learn a language for as long or as short as you want. And also, whenever you learn something new, Learn it actively by practicing it yourself, applying it to the real world like you did today, and writing it down to remember later. As we close off this lesson, I wanted to point, point out some extra information. This slide is the appendix where you can look up any of these re resources to find more lessons in Russian. These include websites, apps, books, and YouTubers, all highly recommended. And this slide is about me. My name is Jovan Alakic, and I love learning languages and cultures in my free time like Serbian, which is my native and also a Slavic language, English, German, Russian, Turkish, and Korean, though of course I haven't mastered all of them just yet. To reference the information presented in the slide, please refer to these websites as well. I hope everyone enjoyed today's lesson and has a wonderful day. Good luck on your future learning, my young pupils.